Welcome back to Chapter 4. Uh, here on Learning Objective 2, we're going to talk about those predetermined overhead rates that we've already talked about in Chapters 2 and 3, and then how we allocate cost in this activity-based costing system. So as I've said earlier, activity-based costing is really an enhancement to our job order or process costing system. So depending on what kind of manufacturing process we have, that will determine whether we are a job order or a process costing system. And then activity-based management focuses as an enhancement to that by focusing on the activities that drive our consumption of overhead. What is it that causes us to incur these indirect costs? So activity-based management management is focusing on looking at the activities as a whole. Maybe instead of just steps in the process, we're looking at the activities as a whole, and we're looking at which activities lead us to greater profits and which activities are not contributing to profits. So to develop an activity-based costing system, first of all, we have to identify all of the activities that use overhead costs that use indirect cost and then estimate out of the total overhead how much does each activity use. Then we're going to identify an allocation base. This is the same as that cost driver that we talked about when we talked about the predetermined overhead rates back in chapter two and three. Although we certainly get more creative than just using direct labor hours, machine hours, or direct labor dollars. We may still use those, but we may use lots of others instead. Maybe it's units produced, maybe it's number of parts, maybe it's number of purchase orders, maybe it's number of batches that we run, maybe it's square footage. It just, it could be anything, right? And so we're going to determine an activity base for each activity and then estimate the amount of each allocation base. Then we'll compute a predetermined overhead rate for each activity. So just like we've done before, we're now going to compute a rate, but instead of having one rate for all of our overhead, we're going to have a separate rate per activity and then we'll allocate the indirect cost to the cost object. So a lot of times students struggle with this because they're, they're trying to understand that this is something new and different. Really, activity-based costing isn't new and different. It's allocating overhead just like we've done before in chapters two and three. We're just now going to do it multiple times. We're going to have, instead of one overhead rate, an overhead rate for each different activity that we have. So here we can see we've identified three activities, setup, production, and testing, and we've identified an allocation base for each of those three activities. So setup is allocated based on number of batches, production is based on direct labor hours, and testing is based on direct labor test. So since we have three activities, we will then compute three rates. We'll have a rate for each of our activities, and then we will allocate each of the three rates to the two active to the two products so we're going to have instead of having one rate and allocating to our products we're now going to have three rates that we allocate to each product this is the only difference in what we've done before we're going to have three rates now instead of just one so here we're told, remember, a total overhead is $100,000. We didn't add any overhead. We didn't take any overhead away. We just took that total overhead of $100,000, and we split it between our three activities. So we said that we think setup is using $18,000 of the $100,000. We said that we think production is using $22,000 of the $100,000, and testing is using $60,000. So we've computed how many batches each model runs, how, much, how many direct labor hours each model uses, and how many tests each model uses. So now based on this data, we're going to compute a rate per activity. So for the setup rate, we're going to say, for example, setup is 18,000, and we're dividing that by 45 batches. And we said production is using $22,000, and we're dividing that by the total of 12,500 direct labor hours, and testing is using $60,000, and we're dividing that by the total of 10,000 tests. So we're going to compute, again, a rate per activity, 
and we're going to do that on the next slide so if you want to go ahead and pause this video try computing these rates yourself and then check yourself on the next slide all right, so for smart touch learning, remember our overhead rate, our formula is the total estimated overhead cost divided by the total estimated allocation base. So for us, it's just the total estimated overhead cost for that activity, right? Divided by the total estimated quantity of the allocation base for that activity. So for setup, it was that 18,000 divided by 45 batches. So that's $400 per batch. For production, it's 22,000 divided by 12,500 direct labor hours, or $1.76 per direct labor hour. And for testing, it's 60,000 divided by 10,000 tests, so that gives us $6 per test. Now let me stop right now and give you a piece of advice. Don't be lazy here, okay? You want to get in the habit of putting your units, of putting your dollar signs on things, because when you're working one of these big problems and that has multiple steps, and you get to the last step and you're trying to find the correct number, but you haven't labeled anything, you don't know which number to grab. So don't just put 400, put setup. 18,000 divided by 45 batches equals $400 per batch. Production, $22,000 divided by 12,500 direct labor hours equals $1.76 per direct labor hour. If you just write 18,000 divided by 45 equals 400, then later on when you're trying to allocate this overhead, you don't know what number is what. So you need to get in the habit of labeling. You need to put your dollar signs if they're, that's appropriate. You need to put your units if that's appropriate. But get in that habit and you'll save yourself a lot of mistakes and a lot of frustration. So now it's time to allocate. So remember the standard model used 20 batches. So if the rate is $400 per batch multiplied by 20 batches, then the standard model is going to get 8,000 of the setup cost. Production uses 10,000 hours for the standard model at $1.76 per hour. That's 17,600 of the production cost allocated to the standard model. And then testing uses 6,000 tests at $6 per test. So that's $36,000 of the testing overhead allocated to the standard model. So when we add that up, we get the total overhead allocated to the standard model is 61.6. Remember, we expect to make 2,000 units of the standard model. So that comes out to $30.80 per unit. Now you go ahead and try the premium model on your own and then come back and check your answer. So just like we allocated the standard model, we're going to allocate the premium model here, $400 per batch times 25 batches, $1.76 per direct labor hour times 2,500 direct labor hours, $6 per test multiplied by 4,000 tests. One thing I wanna point out, notice that total overhead for the premium model is 38.4. If we add up the total overhead from the standard model, plus the total overhead of the premium model, notice that adds up to $100,000. It's the total overhead. We're doing the exact same thing we did before, we're just allocating it in a more sophisticated manner. So those have to add up, barring any um, rounding, to exactly 100,000. So since we expect to make 500 units of the premium model, we divide that by 500 and we get $76.80 per unit for the premium model. So now I can add my direct materials and my direct labor, and I can come up with my new cost per model. So the standard model I think is going to cost approximately, now this is still an approximation, but it's a better approximation than I had before of $268.80, and for the premium model, $424.80. So now we can compare the total cost using the single traditional plant ride rate versus the multiple department rates that we did in video one versus the activity-based costing that we've done here. So notice for the premium model, I originally thought the premium model was gonna cost about $407. Now, after I've 
after I added two departments, I'm like, well, it's closer to, you know, 414. And now I'm like, oh, no, you know what? It's really closer to 425. So by allocating it based on activities, I find out that really I was under costing the premium model by, you know, about $18 a unit, which is a pretty significant amount. Notice with the standard model, I originally thought the standard model was about $273. Then I'm like, mm, no, it's about $271.5. And, and now I'm like, no, it's closer to $269, $268.80. So I was over costing the standard model by, you know, $4 and something. And I was under costing the premium model by about $18. So by using the activity-based costing, I'm getting a more accurate cost per unit. And I can use that then to adjust the my, my recording of my accounting numbers. So I'm going to get better accurate um, estimates for profit. I also could use these perhaps to adjust my cost, my selling price. Because if I'm using cost plus pricing, if I'm using a markup based on cost, well, I was setting the selling price of the standard model originally too high, right? I was basing it off of a cost of 273 instead of a cost of 269. I was setting it a few dollars too high. Now I can lower that price a little bit. Maybe that will increase demand. We know for normal goods, when the selling price drops, demand increases, right? For the premium model, I was originally costing the premium model too low. Uh, I was basing it on a cost of 407 instead of 425. Really, I need to increase the price of the premium model, uh, or at least consider it.